One of my own personal secrets for feeling successful and attracting bountiful abundance into my life has been an internal axiom that I use virtually every day of my life. It goes like this. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. Once again, change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. This has always worked for me, and it will work for you too, I can guarantee it. Your intention to feel successful and experience prosperity and abundance depends on what view you have of yourself, the universe, and most important, the field of intention from which success and abundance will come. My little maxim about changing the way you look at things is an extremely powerful tool. First, examine how you look at things and then how the spirit of intention does the same. How do you look at life? The way you look at life is essentially a barometer of your expectations based on what you've been taught you're worthy of and capable of achieving. These expectations are largely imposed by external influences such as family, community, and institutions. But they're also influenced by that ever-present inner companion, your ego. These sources of your expectations are largely based on the beliefs of limitation, scarcity, and pessimism about what's possible for you. If these beliefs are the basis for how you look at life, then this perception of the world is what you expect for yourself. Attracting abundance, prosperity, and success from these limiting viewpoints is an absolute impossibility. Take an inventory of how you look at the world, asking yourself how much of your life energy is focused on explaining away potentially optimistic viewpoints by preferring to see the inequities and the inconsistencies and the abundance for all philosophy. Can you change the way you look at things? Can you see potential for prosperity where you've always seen scarcity? Can you change what is simply by changing the way you see it? I say a resounding yes to these questions. And the way to work at changing the way you look at things is to take a hard look at something you may not have previously considered. How does the universal all-creating field of intention look at life? The field of intention, which is responsible for all creation, is constantly giving. In fact, it knows no bounds to its giving. It just keeps on converting pure, formless spirit into a myriad of material forms. Furthermore, this field of intention gives in unlimited supplies. There's no such concept as shortage or scarcity when it comes to the originating source. So we're looking at two major conceptualizations when we think of the universal mind's natural abundance. The first is that it's perpetually giving, and the second, that it offers an infinite supply. A message to the field of intention that says, please send me more money, is interpreted as you're seeing yourself in a state of scarcity. But this source has no concept of scarcity. It doesn't even know what not having enough money means. Thus, its response back to you will be, here's a state of needing more money because that's how you think, and I'm the mind with which you think, so here's more of what you don't want and don't have. Your ego-dominated response will be, my desires are being denied. But the real truth is, the universal source knows only abundance and giving and will respond with money flowing to you if your intention is, I have enough money and I allow what I already have enough of to continue to flow to me. If you tell the universal mind what you want, it will respond by leaving you in a state of wanting, never arriving and always needing more. If, however, you feel that what you intend to manifest has already manifested, you're unified with your intention. Never allowing a moment of doubt or listening to naysayers, you'll be in the presence of that all-creating field of intention. You can't come from shortage, you can't come from scarcity, and you can't come from wanting. You must come from the same attributes as that which allows everything. This is a key word, allowing. Allowing this all-giving source into your life means becoming aware of the resistance that you may be placing in the way of the abundance that's always being supplied. There's a long history of countless thoughts that have formed this field of resistance to abundance. This habit of disallowing grew from the belief system that you've cultivated over the years and that you rely on. Furthermore, you've allowed the resistance of others to enter this picture as well, and you surround yourself with the need for their approval in these matters. You solicit their resistant opinions, read newspaper accounts of all of those who failed to manifest the jobs of their choice, examine government reports about the poor job prospects and the declining economy, watch the television reports belaboring the sorry state of affairs in the world, and your resistance becomes even more convincingly entrenched. You've aligned yourself with the proponents of disallowing. What you need to do is to look at this belief system and all of the factors that continue to support it and say, 
it's too big of a job to change the entire thing. Instead, I'm going to start changing the thoughts that activate disallowing right here, right now. It doesn't matter what you thought before, or for how long, or how many pressures you're under to maintain your resistance. Instead, stop activating disallowing thoughts today, one thought at a time. You can do so by stating, I feel successful, I intend to feel the abundance that is here, now. Repeat these words, or create your arrangement of words, which continually inundate your thoughts during your waking hours with a new belief of being successful and abundant. Those thoughts will then become what you say in silent, prayer-like messages to yourself, I am success, I am abundance. When your success itself, when your abundance itself, you're in harmony with the all-creating source, and it will do the only thing it knows how to do. It will be endlessly giving and forthcoming with that which has no resistance to it, namely you and your thoughts. As you practice allowing and living the faith of least resistance, Success is no longer something you choose, it's something that you are. Abundance no longer eludes you, you are it, and it is you. It flows unimpeded beyond your resistance. Herein lies another clue to the free flow of abundance. You must avoid becoming attached to and hoarding what shows up in your life. While it's crucial for you to have a firm vibrational matchup with the all-creating abundance of intention, it's just as crucial for you to know that you can't hang on to and own any of the abundance that will be coming your way. This is because the you that would like to hang on to and become attached to your success and your wealth is not really you. It's that troublesome ego of yours. You're not what you have, and you're not what you do. You're an infinite, divine being disguised as a successful person who has accumulated a certain amount of stuff. But the stuff is not you. This is why you must avoid being attached to it in any way.